Good afternoon. Mark Sutter with HurricaneTrack.com here with your Hurricane Outlook and discussion. I want to talk about potential tropical cyclone 7. What does that mean? Well, the National Hurricane Center this year exercising its option to initiate advisories on a system that is forecast by the models and the National Hurricane Center itself to eventually become a tropical cyclone, in this case a tropical storm, is imminent. And so to get the ball rolling and get the watches and warnings up in a timely fashion instead of waiting and waiting and waiting, they changed it so that they can initiate these advisories on what we call a potential tropical cyclone. And we're up to the seventh system of the season. Uh, so we're just moving along in the numbers, the way they number these. Similar to the invest areas, the very first tropical cyclone of the season or of the year this year was Arlene many, many months ago, and that's O1L. O1 for the first one, L for Atlantic. And so technically, in the way that they do things, this is called O7L because it is and will be the seventh tropical cyclone of the Atlantic Basin year. And eventually this is going to become a very, uh, very likely uh, tropical storm Franklin. All right, so with all that out of the way, you know, once people get used to it, we won't have to explain it as much. So the bottom line is we do have a tropical storm uh, watch in effect for portions of Belize here. We'll go into the details in just a moment. And then tropical storm warnings encompassing a good deal of the Yucatan Peninsula itself. And that includes the western side uh, on the assumption that this will cross over and bring tropical storm conditions to that region. Interesting that they do not forecast this to become a hurricane, as you see by the S symbols in here. I, just based on past experience and the very real fact that intensity forecasting is where there is the least amount of skill, that I would suspect this will become a hurricane. So let's take a look at the data in the text product here. Potential tropical cyclone number seven, advisory number one, and this is based on the five o'clock Eastern time data. Uh, the latitude and longitude information is in here. That's not really what we're focusing on. Let's go down and look at the summary of watches and warnings. Tropical storm warning in effect for the coast of Mexico from Chetumal to Campeche, and then a tropical storm watch is in effect for uh, Belize City northward to the border of Mexico. All right, so there's just a small area in the watch and then a larger area in the warning extending from Chetamal on the east side all around the rest of the Yucatan encompassing the northeast side and around to the north side and that would include Cozumel, Cancun, etc. In fact, let me just go back to the graphic just a moment and point that out one more time as that is important. So the warning does in fact encompass the resort areas up here as well. So keep that in mind as this system comes into the area. So back to the text data. Uh, so, you know, a tropical storm warning means that tropical storm conditions are expected somewhere within the warning area, in this case within 24 to 36 hours. So it's pretty imminent. And then the watch means that conditions are possible, tropical storm conditions within 24 to 36 hours, etc. And, you know, it's not a hurricane yet, so that's good news there. If we look at the discussion and the outlook, the information, again, recapping what the winds and everything are, but this par paragraph here, important upper-level winds are expected to become more conducive for development, and, that's, and the disturbance is likely to become a tropical cyclone overnight. So we're getting pretty close to 100% here overall as this marches on to the west. And then hazards affecting land, rainfall three to six inches with isolated amounts of a foot are possible across the Yucatan Peninsula of Mexico and Belize through Wednesday. And of course, rain in and of itself is a major hazard and it could create life-threatening flash floods. And then of course the wind with tropical storm conditions expected in the area uh, and the warning area over the next 24 to 36 hours. Looking at the visible Satellite image this afternoon, late in the afternoon, you can see it's definitely trying to organize in this area and uh, forecast to cross the coast, the center 
somewhere in this vicinity over the next 24, less than 24 hours, I would imagine sometime later tomorrow, it'll do so. And then again, crossing into uh, the southern Gulf of Mexico, the Bay of Campeche here, and eventually into Mexico itself, again, on the western part of the Gulf, the southwest Gulf, and uh, that would be sometime on Thursday, it looks like. So, we'll see uh, the discussion. Let's see if the forecast discussion should be available. If we go back here, I do want to read what the thinking is about why it was not forecast to be a hurricane. There we are. Um, since the center lacks... Okay, this is that's based on the track. Surface scatterometer data indicate that the broad area of low pressure still lacks a well-defined center, etc. Uh, just trying to see the disturbance has been experiencing western uh, westerly vertical shear due to a nearby upper level low. Global model predictions show that this low will soon dissipate and an upper level anticyclone will become established over the area. Um, therefore, strengthening is likely with the main impediment being interaction with the land. It should be noted that the system could become a hurricane between 72 and 96 hours prior to reaching the Gulf Coast of Mexico. Okay, it's good to see that that was mentioned, so don't let the lack of the graphic there showing it becoming a hurricane here uh, with these F symbols between this point and this point. It could become a hurricane according to the data there from the National Hurricane Center. So don't let that fool you, all right? So, you know, we'll keep an eye on it. Uh, interest along the Yucatan into Mexico. Uh, watches and warnings are up, so we'll see what happens. I'll have another update in the morning. And then at some point tomorrow, we'll go live for 8 to 12 hours as we discuss what's happening on YouTube. And we'll be able to chat and post links, etc. I'll talk more about that tomorrow. But uh, it's a way to sort of now cast what's going on and present information as it comes in and maybe field some stuff from Twitter and keep people in the know as it's happening. But I'll talk about that more tomorrow. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Mark Suddeth for HurricaneTrack.com. I'll have more coverage for you tomorrow.